This is an infrared laser putting out a beam at 980 nanometers, but you can't see it because humans can't see infrared light. But we can visualize this beam by using a card that looks like this. It's an infrared sensor card. When you shine the laser light on it, now you can see a red dot where the laser is. But this shouldn't seem right to you if you think about the wavelengths and the energy of this light. Infrared light has a low frequency, long wavelength. But this paper is giving off red light with a higher frequency light that has more energy. That seems to break the laws of thermodynamics. So we should expect to get only the same frequency or lower frequency than the light that we shined on it to begin with. So what's going on in this case then? Well, what's happening is that this card actually gets charged up from the light in the room with higher frequency than red light. This knocks some of the electrons to a high energy state. And then when we shine the infrared laser on it, it knocks those electrons loose and they emit red light at 650 nanometers wavelength. So the extra energy came from the light in the room, not the laser. You can actually see this same effect with just some glow in the dark material. So I can charge up this glow in the dark toy, but then I shine the infrared laser on it and you can see a green dot there. So that's just because it's releasing the light that was used to charge it in the first place. So I didn't convert IR light to green light, it just released the green light by shining the IR light on it. Because this is so big, you can't really see that it's actually causing it to release the light and then it should make that spot darker. But if I get a thinner toy like this one, you can see that it actually makes it darker after I shine the infrared light on it. And the same thing with this IR detector sheet. If I leave the laser in one spot, the light fades away because it released all the electrons, so now there isn't any more light to be released. So you can see that you usually never get higher energy light coming off of something than the light that you shined on it in the first place. But there are always exceptions to the general rule. For example, if you have a certain type of crystal called a nonlinear crystal, and you happen to have two photons of IR light enter the crystal at the same time, then these two photons can actually combine together with exactly double the frequency and produce green light. You can see this in real life when I take 1064 nanometer IR light and shine it through this nonlinear crystal, it produces 532 nanometer light that's exactly half the wavelength and double the frequency. This is actually how most green laser pointers are made. But notice how we still only get one specific wavelength coming out of the nonlinear crystal. This is all that I thought was possible to do to convert a low energy light like infrared light to a higher energy light. That was until I was messing around with my Crookes radiometer. This is a fun little device that spins around when you shine a flashlight on it. A little side note on Crookes radiometers, most of the time the way they work is explained incorrectly. The correct reason they spin is because the black side heats up and the momentum of the hot gases on the edge of the vein pushes on the black side more than the white. So I was watching how it spins using my different lasers, but then I noticed something very interesting. So this is an infrared laser. You can see, you can't see the laser beam at all. But watch what happens when I shine it on the black veins here. You can see it. It also spins it, but look how bright it is. Let's turn it upside down so it doesn't spin now. Look how bright that is. This is not a hot laser. I'm shining on my hand, I literally can't feel anything. But for some reason, when I shine it on here, I can instantly see it. It gets so bright. I can even leave it in the exact same spot and it doesn't fade. So what is going on here? Why does this happen? So weird. Nonlinear crystals usually produce frequency doubling, so I should see about a green or a blue color if that were happening. But I'm actually seeing white light. So look, I can actually check that this is white light. I have a diffraction grating I'm gonna put in front of the camera. You can see the full spectrum here. Look at that, it has blue light, red light, green light, orange light, yellow light. It's a full spectrum coming off of here. What is going on here? This is so weird and it's extremely bright too. Not only is this producing frequencies way higher than my input frequency, but it's producing many frequencies from one single input frequency. This is so weird. The only thing that I can think of is something called super continuum generation. 
This is a process where nonlinear optical effects can produce a broad spectrum from a single input frequency. Now it's a current field of research where they use this effect to make white laser light that have a broad band of many different frequencies, not just a combination of red, green, or blue frequencies. Now I could be missing something easy here, that's why I'm making this video. Is this actually super continuum generation happening here? I wonder if it has something to do with inside of this, there's rarefied air, so there's a pretty good vacuum in here. There's still a little bit, it needs enough to make the veins be pushed by the air, but there's still a good vacuum in here. So let's see what happens when we take it out. Let's break this open and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Hate to do this, I've had this radiometer a while. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that was crazy. <laughs> that was more explosive than I thought. It actually imploded because there's a vacuum in there, but that was way worse than a light bulb. I thought it would be similar to a light bulb. <laughs> okay, so outside in the air, it does not work. Let's confirm that it was a vacuum needed to make it work. Okay, now I've stuck it in my vacuum chamber. You guys always make fun of me because I always find a way to use my vacuum chamber in my videos, but it's actually a really useful tool in a lot of ways. So I've sucked out all of the air in here. Let's see if it actually lights up still. A little bit. Oh, it is, it is lighting up. Okay, so at this point we know it works in a vacuum, but it doesn't in air. That's really suspicious to me. That leads me to believe that this is actually incandescence happening, meaning that I'm heating it up white hot, almost instantly. And sure enough, I found that the right optical length from it, so right at the focal point where the laser is the most condensed, I can actually get it to heat up to be smoking in the air. So the reason this happened better in the vacuum is because there was no oxygen to combust with, so basically I can make a small light bulb. Also, the vacuum was able to insulate it so it could get instantly white hot. It seems like it took no time for it to heat up at all. As soon as the laser turned on, it was white hot. And the dot would move around just like a laser pointer on it. It even did it on the white side too, so it didn't seem like it was absorbing that much of the IR. So in the end, we didn't achieve super continuum generation. We just heated up something white hot almost instantly with a pretty low powered IR laser. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And also hit the bell so you're notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.